Hi everyone. In today's video, I would like to talk to you about bevel gears. Now, in previous videos, we talked about cylindrical gears like these, which can be used to transmit power between two parallel shafts. Bevel gears, on the other hand, transmit power between two shafts that are intersecting. Now, the angle at which they intersect could be anything, but in practice, it's almost always 90 degrees. So that's what I've modeled here. Now, the geometry of bevel gears can be quite complex. It's quite difficult to wrap your head around. So I'll be comparing it quite a lot to cylindrical gears that you already know to hopefully make it a little bit more intuitive. When we discussed planetary gears, I pointed out that a pair of cylindrical gears like these can be modeled as a pair of cylinders that roll against each other without slipping. And the bevel gear equivalent for this is a pair of cones that again roll against each other without slipping. And in particular, the cones have to meet at their apexes. So let's first go ahead and model a pair of cones like this. Starting from a blank file, the first thing I'll do is create a sketch on one of the vertical planes. And I'll start with R for rectangle and draw a rectangle from the origin out like this. And I'll hit L for line, and I'll draw a line from the origin to the diagonally opposite point. Next, I want to give the dimensions for my gears. So I want the larger of the two gears to have 40 teeth and a module of two, so 40 times two. But what we're giving here is essentially a radius, so I'll also divide it by two. And I want a one to two gear set, so the other gear has 20 teeth, the same module, of course, and again divided by two because it's a radius. And with these two dimensions, our sketch is fully constrained. So these two lines here will be the shafts later on, and the angle between them is 90 degrees, and that's because we made a rectangle. But notice that these two angles here, which will be the cone angles later on are also fully constrained and this highlights a first important difference between bevel gears and other types of gears. The geometry of the gears themselves and the shaft angle and the gear ratio are all interlinked and so if you take a 20 tooth pinion from a 1 to 2 set and you match it with the gear of a 60 tooth gear from a 1 to 3 set you will get your 1 to 3 ratio but you will also get a slightly different and somewhat random shaft angle so this is why bevel gears are very often sold in sets so let's finish the sketch and then we go to the revolve tool and then we'll revolve this profile around this axis here. And then we'll select a new component for the operation. And then under my settings, the sketch is automatically hidden. So let's unhide it. And then we hit revolve for the other profile on this axis. And again, new component. We now have two cones. And these two cones touch each other along this line here in the sketch. And if we go to our other example of cylindrical gears, there is also a similar line where these two cylinders are touching. And this is where a lot of the action is going to take place. And another thing that we need is a plane perpendicular to this line. So under construct, I will go for a plane along a path. And then I'll put it on this path and all the way at the end point. We now need to add teeth to these gears. And if we look at cylindrical gears, the easiest way to do that is to start off with the right inner diameter and then simply add a tooth to that. So the first thing we need to make is the bevel gear equivalent of the inner diameter. So to do that, I'll edit the sketch that we started with and I'll draw out a line from this endpoint here and I'll make that line perpendicular to the diagonal where the cones meet. And I'll give this line a length of 1.25 times the module, because that is the standard value for the dedendum of a gear. Finally, I hit L for line again, and I connect the endpoint of this new line to the apex. 
And this illustrates really the essential difference geometrically between cylindrical gears and bevel gears. So in cylindrical gears, there are all these lines that are all parallel to each other, and they are also parallel to both of the shafts. In bevel gears, on the other hand, the shafts meet, and all the lines in the geometry also end up meeting at this apex. So instead of them all being parallel, they all converge on a single point. So I'll now construct the same thing for the other gear. So make this perpendicular and make it 1.25 times 2 long. And then the final thing I'll do is draw some lines out from this corner point here upwards. And I'll have them meet up with the shaft. I can now finish the sketch and I can go into both of the revolves and I can deselect this part and select the other bit and I'll do the same thing for the other cone. And this gives us basically the inner diameter equivalent of bevel gears. One final small issue is that the outer edges of these cones have this rather sharp angle to them. So I'd like to add a little bit of meat there to give them some support. So I'll edit the sketch that we started with again. And I'll draw out a line again. And I want to make this line parallel to these dedendum lines that we made before. And in particular, notice that they are not perpendicular to these lines here. So make sure you don't get fooled by the auto constraint. Then alpha line again, and then just connect them up to the shaft. And then I'll do the same thing over here. And then I'll give a dimension between the far back side here and the pitch line of this gear of five millimeters here. And I'll make it 10 millimeters here. And one thing you should note in particular is that this distance here, of course, is 20 millimeters. And that means that the distance from the apex to the back of the larger gear is 30 millimeters. And from the apex to the back of the pinion is 45 millimeters. And these numbers are going to be important later when you're going to mount your gears on the shafts because you need something to index off of relative to the apex and the back surface is usually the only thing you have. So finish the sketch and then again edit the revolves to now include the extra meat that we added. Now for tooth profiles there are a few different options. But for today's video, I'll be using regular cylindrical involute profiles using a process known as Tretgold's approximation. And to show you how that works, I'm going to this new file here. And here I have drawn out two pitch cones. And notice that these pitch cones are at a shaft angle other than 90 degrees. So if I go into the sketch here used to make these cones, we have this line of contact between the two cones, and then you can see the two triangles that were used to revolve these cones. And now perpendicular to this line of contact, I have drawn out this new line, and the same thing here on the other side. And I have extended both of those lines all the way until they intersect the shaft. And this creates a new triangle and this triangle I could revolve again around the axis to create something called the back cone. If we go into the sketch in particular, what we can see is that we have a length of 20 millimeters for this line here. So the idea is that it will be a 20 tooth module 2 gear. And the length now of this line here, this new diagonal that we just drew, is going to be this 20 millimeters divided by the cosine of this 60 degrees. And that's just basic trigonometry within this right-sided triangle.
And this 60 degrees also matches the apex angle here of the cone that we started with. And the geometry for the other cone here is exactly the same because it's basically an identical cone. So the length now of this line here is 40 millimeters. And what I want to do now is create a gear with module two because I, I want a module two gear, but I want its pitch radius to be equal to this 40 millimeters. And so for that, what I need is a 40 tooth module two gear. So that's what I've already made. And that is this gear over here. So that is 40 teeth module two. And because both of these gears are identical in this case, uh, the other cone will have exactly the same kind of gear. And so these are now essentially the virtual spur gears for this bevel gear set. And the 40 tooth count that we have come up with is the virtual number of teeth for these gears. And the idea now is that the meshing of these two spur gears within this plane over here, again at the edge of this contact line, is a good approximation for the meshing of the bevel gears. And in particular, uh, that the tooth profile on these gears is a good approximation for the tooth profile that we need on the bevel gears. So with this approximation method in hand, let's now go back to our original file and add some teeth to those gears. Going back once again into the original sketch that we started with, I'm going to hit L for line again. And from this endpoint here of this contact line, I'm going to draw out a line down to here and then join it up vertically with the shaft. Then I'll ensure that the line is perpendicular to the contact line. And then when I hit D for dimension, I see now that this line is 89.443 millimeters. And that's a little strange because how can I make a module two gear with a pitch radius of 89.443? That calls for a fractional number of teeth and that makes no sense. But here I have modeled two gears with 10 and 11 teeth. And you can see that there is this difference between their tooth profiles. And while it doesn't make any sense to talk about a gear with 10 and a half teeth, it does make some kind of sense to talk about a tooth profile that sits halfway between these two profiles here. And that is the tooth profile that Treadgold's approximation calls for. We are, however, stuck with the regular gear generator of Fusion 360, which will not accept a fractional input to the number of teeth. So I'm going to make an additional approximation on top of Treadgold's approximation. And for that, I'm going to take the number of teeth that I need for this gear and I'm going to round it up. And for this gear, I'll round the number of teeth down. So let's finally get to it. I'll open up the gear generator. And we are going to create a module tool gear. That's what we said in the beginning. And I want to have 90 number of teeth now. Backlash zero as before, so we can see uh, how well our modeling method works. We don't need a root fillet radius. The thickness of the gear is honestly irrelevant and we also don't need a hole. So generate this gear. And then we'll just move this gear out over here. And I'm going to unfold this grouping. And then we are going to delete some parts of this gear. So I don't need this central circle. I don't need this pattern and I do not need this sketch. So I'll select all of those and hit delete. And now we have a warning for this extrude, but that's fine. We just go into edit the feature and the operation join is failing because we deleted the thing it was joining onto. So we'll just select a new body and it's okay. So now I'll activate the spur gear component and I'll create a new sketch capture position because I don't want this thing to fly off and I hit L for line and I'm going to draw out the line horizontally and I'm going to give it a length of 90 millimeters. And the reason I'm drawing out this line is because I want to have this point over here because that point will sit on the center of the tooth on the pitch circle because the pitch diameter of this gear is 180 millimeters. With that 
I can finish the sketch. And then what I need to do is go under Modify, Align. And I'm going to align this thing here with the end of the line of contact that we made here. And this is a little finicky to get right, but you essentially want to ensure, let me first hide the plane, that you've got it like this, so that your mouse is still slightly hovering over that line of contact, so that the orientation is in line with that line of contact. So click this, then I want to turn it like so. And then that is going to be okay. Next, I will activate the component for this bevel gear. And let's rename this to bull gear and let's rename the other thing to pinion. And what we're going to do now is hide these for that one for the moment. And we are going for create, loft, capture position. And we are going to loft this tooth profile up to this point. And notice now that we are in the active component of this bull gear. That's important. And then we are going to select new body. Um, there are a few other things you could do here that would work in theory. Uh, but in practice, your computer will choke on the load. So this is really the only way to do it. Click OK on this. And then we have a single tooth in place. Before we create a circular pattern for this tooth to make a full gear, I first want to trim it down to its proper length. So the first thing I'll do is take this tooth profile that we used at the start, and then I will remove it. And the next thing I'll do is go into the root component and then go into the original sketch that we started with yet again. I'm going to hit L for line and I'm going to draw a line that will connect from one of the inner diameters to the other inner diameter. And I'm going to make this line perpendicular to the line of contact between the two gears, this diagonal that we started with. The next thing I'll do is hit L for line again and from the end point of this new line, draw two lines to connect them here and there to the axes. The next thing I want to do is constrain this thing to give it its final position. And there are basically two ways to do it. One way is to determine the length here from the end point of the diagonal and this line here. So that would go like this. But what I will do here instead is constrain this distance here to be 10 millimeters. And in that case, we can add a driven dimension here. And this length here, this distance between the end of this contact line and this line here, this 12 millimeters and a little bit, is the face width of the gear, essentially how long the teeth are going to be. So we finish the sketch. And then what we're going to do is go into the bull gear component. We're going to unhide the sketch. And we are going to do a revolve of at least these bits here around this axis over here. And the operation here is going to be a cut. So click OK on that. And the next thing we can do is finally pattern the body. So a circular pattern of type bodies. The object is the tooth here. The axis is this thing here. And then the quantity is going to be 40 teeth. Click OK on that. And that is nearly our completed gear. The final thing we want to do now is combine them all into a single body. So if we go in here, we see that we have rather a lot of bodies. So modify, combine. The target body is this first body over here. And then for the tool body, I will select this body here. And then I scroll down, I hold shift and I hit the final body. And then I can click OK and then everything is joined up into a single body. The final thing I want to do is trim everything down a little bit because one issue that I have here is that the ends of these tooth profiles are flat, 
but this surface here is curved, so that's rather ugly. For that, I am once again going back into the original sketch. And what I will do simply is create a line that goes from the back of the pinion all the way to the back of the bull gear. And then I will simply make both of these lines vertical and horizontal. Finish the sketch. And then in the bull gear component again, I can do another revolve of this new triangle here along this axis here, and that'll be a cut again. Click OK on this, and then we have tidied up the back of the teeth. And then we have a mostly finished bull gear. So now I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the pinion. So first thing I'll do is unhide the pinion and activate the component. I'm going to go first actually into the original sketch, again the one that we started with, because I never drew the back cone for the other gear. So once again, go like this, then make this line perpendicular to the line of contact, and then you can check how long it is. You can also do the trigonometry yourself, of course, but you could also let Fusion 360 do it for you. So we need 22.361 for the pitch radius, and with a module of two, that means we need 22.361 teeth. Again, that's not something we can do with the gear generator, so I will round this down to 22 teeth. So finish the sketch. And then we are going to create a new component from the spirit gear generator. And then in this case, it's going to be 22 teeth. Move that out here, unfold this group. This gone, this gone, this gone, this gone. I don't like leaving warnings on my timeline, so I always edit the feature and create new body here. Uh, I just don't want to see any yellow on my timeline, really. Uh, activate this component, then create a new sketch. Oops, I should have captured position there, but it doesn't matter too, too much. So this is going to be 22 millimeters. That gives us this point over here. Then modify, align this point over here to this line over here. And again, it's a bit finicky to make sure that it follows the line of contact here. Maybe if we hide the bull gear, we'll have more luck. There we go. Uh, so now the gear, the tooth is directly in the correct position. I don't need to flip it now. So we can click OK on this. Uh, next we go into a different issue here, which is that this surface doesn't completely line up with the circle, or with the cone rather, so it's not long enough. So what I can simply do, this this is all the way in the root of the tooth, so it doesn't matter too much that the tooth profile won't be completely exact there. Um, so I select the right face, this face, and I press pull that upwards a little bit when I'm inside of this spur gear tooth thing. Click OK on that. So when we go back now, we see that the tooth is entirely connected with the bevel gear, with the pinion. And now we can go for a loft capture position. We don't need this sketch. From there to the origin, and the origin is also, because of where the first sketch is, that's where the apexes meet. So operation is going to be new body. Uh, cancel this, because I do need to make sure that I'm in the pinion component when I do this. So loft, capture position, this profile to this point, new body. Then a revolve cut for these three bits here around this axis here. And that will cut both the tooth and uh, it will cut down the base of the gear itself. Then we can take this thing and remove it. Then we are going to do a circular pattern of type bodies. 
I want the circular pattern this body around this axis and I want 20 teeth on this gear. Click OK. Then modify combine. This body, click body number two for the tool body and then shift click 21. And then you can click OK. And then the final thing, again, we want to trim these teeth flush with the back of the gear. So revolve this profile around this axis and check that objects to cut is only the pinion. That is the case in this case because uh, the bull gear is hidden. So now we can unhide this. I said unhide this. Um, and now we can go set up some joints. I'm simply going to make these joints between the gears themselves and the sketch that we started out with, because you can make joints to sketches. So hit joint, and then I'm going to hit control and select the center point here. And then moving along this line, I joint it to there. And then it's a revolute joint, and that looks about right. And then on the angle, I'm going to adjust this slightly. So I want this to be 360 divided by two times the number of teeth. And what this does is it rotates the gear by a half tooth and that causes it to fall into alignment here. So that's okay. And the next thing I'll do is the same thing for the bull gear. So again, make sure that you're following this line here so that the orientation is correct. And again, that looks about right. The final thing I want to do is create a motion link. So motion link this gear or this joint to that joint. So the orientation is incorrect. I need to reverse this. And when the pinion rotates 360 degrees, I want the bull gear to rotate 180 degrees. Click OK on this. And then I can, for example, do animate model here. And we see that we have a pretty good meshing action. As before, let's take a closer look at what the meshing actually looks like. So I will select plane along a path and I will go again on this contact line between the two cones. And I'll just drag the plane somewhere such that it intersects the teeth and click OK. And then I will hit inspect, section analysis, and I want to section analysis on this new plane and click OK. Then we can go to the sketches and hide the sketch. And we can also hide the plane that we just made. And then we can take a closer look at this meshing. So you can see that over here in this area, it's quite tight. So that's looking pretty good. And down here, it's also looking pretty tight and pretty good to me. And so as this tooth here comes into mesh, you see that it works quite well. The other thing that we want to check, if we go into analysis and unhide it, uh, is inspect and a interference analysis. We want to capture this position because we're in a somewhat random position after all these rotations. And I want to select these two bodies here. We could also select the whole components and compute any interferences and we see no interferences detected. Here I've created basically the same gear set. So module two and then 20 teeth for the pinion and 40 teeth for the gear. The only difference here is that I have selected a backlash of 0.1 millimeters in the gear generator because you need a little bit of backlash in real life. So I have these holes here. So let me isolate this component. So I have these embedded nuts here with the holes for the set screws to go in. You can check out how to do that in video one. And then other than that, I simply have a little frame that has some pockets for bearings to go into uh, and a little axle clamp here to make sure that the axle doesn't move. And here we have provisions to mount a motor. So let's go take a look what this thing looks like in real life. Here we have that gear set in real life. Now. I don't have any projects currently that require bevel gears, so I just made this one to drive this video. But driving gears without any load on them is a little bit boring, so what I also made is a little propeller. This one 
to act as a load for our drive unit. So let's go ahead and test it. Here I've got this drive unit securely clamped to the table. So let's turn it on and see how well it works. So this is looking pretty good at 9 volts, so let's turn that up slowly to 24. If you look at this from the right angle, you can actually see that it's dynamically unbalanced. But don't worry. I have a video about that too. I'd like to take a moment to discuss the forces acting between these two bevel gears. So as we discussed in video 2, inside of the meshing plane, which points in roughly this direction, there are two forces. One force points directly up or down, and that is the force that is transmitting the torque, doing the actual work. But there is also an additional force that is pushing the gears apart, pointing roughly in this direction. Now for the pinion in this case, most of that force is aligned this way, pushing against the radial direction of the bearings. But some of this force is pushing this way, along the length of the shaft, creating a thrust load on the bearings. Now, for this type of gearing, this is not a huge problem because ball bearings can take a moderate amount of thrust load. But if the thrust load becomes rather large, then you should consider instead angular contact bearings or tapered roller bearings or something else that can take a good thrust load. Notice also that the thrust force is much greater here for this larger gear because the direction is much less favorable of the overall force. The other thing is that the pinion in this case is supported by two bearings here, but the same is not true for the larger gear, simply because only one of the two shafts can pass through the apex. They can't both be there at the same time. So this gear here is cantilevered out, and because of that, the forces trying to push it around basically have more effect. And to prevent that, uh, the only thing you can really do is create very stiff mountings for the bearings in the back here. I'd now like to show you how I prepared these gears for 3D printing. For the ball gear, it's pretty simple. You just hit E for extrude. You take this back circle here and you just extrude that down by 10 millimeters. But for the pinion, it's a little bit more tricky. So if we look at the circle over here and we take the outside edge, we see that it has a radius of 10 millimeters. And we want to use a shaft here for 10 millimeters, so we don't really have enough meat there. So what I'll do is activate the pinion component, create a new sketch on the back here, and then I'll hit C for circle and drag that out and make that circle equal to this little arc here so that it matches the inner diameter of the gear effectively. Then I hit L for line, and from the origin I drag out a line vertically like this, so the vertical is now a little bit skewed because the gear has been rotated. And specifically I want this point here to lie on this inner diameter that we've drawn, and I want it to lie on the center line of the tooth. So finish the sketch, E for extrude, I take this outer donut and then I'm going to extrude it to an object and that object will be this surface over here. So click join and now again my sketch auto hides in my settings so let's unhide it. The next thing I want to do is extrude this sketch backwards. I didn't need to unhide the sketch for that actually but okay. So do that for 10 millimeters, that's enough meat for what we need. And then the final thing I want to do is if I look at this gear from the side, I want to have this surface here on the build plate. And so that means that the bottom ends of these teeth are going to form very steep overhangs. And so that's not going to print very well. So what I'm going to do is create a loft from the base of the tooth here to this point that we made in the sketch. And under operation, I'm going to do new body. Again, this method is the one that computes the easiest. 
circular pattern of type bodies. The object is going to be the tooth thingy that we just made. Revolve that around this axis and we want 20 because we have 20 teeth. Click OK. Modify combine this body, shift click all of these bodies. OK. And from here, the pinion is also essentially done. All you need to do now again is add the features from video one. Looking at the bevel gear now in Cura, if we scroll through the layers, we can see that the tooth profiles don't lie perfectly within the XY plane, which is something that we did try to achieve with regular spur gears and helical gears. So because now part of the tooth profile is in the Z direction, I recommend that you use a, a small as possible layer height as you're comfortable with with respect to the print time. So if we reduce the layer height here to 0.1 millimeters, we get a much better reproduction of the tooth profiles. Another thing I would recommend, because the resolution on the bottom end here doesn't matter that much, is to use a dynamic layer height or even controlling the layer height manually so that you can print the lower bit quite quickly and then slow down to a lower layer height to print the top bit where the teeth are more accurately. The final thing I want to point out is that the last few layers consist of very small portions of teeth with a lot of travels and retractions. And this can be quite poor for the print quality at the end. So the reproduction of the tips of these teeth can be quite poor. So for that, it is possible to go into Fusion 360 and do one of those revolve cuts to trim off the tips of the teeth like this. The final thing I wish to show you is that it is very important to accurately position your bevel gears on their shafts. So to illustrate this, I want to first look at a set of regular spur gears. And here I have a set that is in perfect mesh. So if we look at this from the top, we see that there's absolutely no backlash between these gears. Now, as we've seen in video two, if you misplace the shafts, so let's say that the shaft of this gear is a half millimeter too far off to the side, then you will introduce some backlash to this gear set. So having moved this gear now by a half millimeter, we see that a lot of backlash has opened up here. And also the contact between these teeth is now no longer a perfect rolling contact, which introduces some friction and some wear. The upside to this is that it is generally quite easy to position your shafts accurately. All you need to do is place your bearings accurately. And for that, all you need to do is place the bearing housings accurately. And usually your 3D printer can do that quite well, or otherwise your mill. The other error that you can make, though, is that even if your shafts are in the right position, your gear might not be in the right position on that shaft. So let's say now that this gear is a millimeter too tall on its shafts, too high. Then we see from the top that the mesh is still perfect. So there's still no backlash here between these teeth. But if we look from this side, we see that part of this green tooth here is no longer in contact with the red gear. And vice versa, this happens also on the bottom. So effectively, we've lost some surface area that is participating in transferring the load. But otherwise, the mesh is still completely fine. The problem with bevel gears is that if we move this gear on the shaft, so starting from a perfect mesh like this, we edit this joint and let's move this gear a half millimeter backwards. And the issue is that we now get both of these errors at the same time, not because the shafts are misaligned, the shafts are still perfectly in position, but because this gear here is not correctly positioned on its shaft. So if we look here, we see that we have that the tooth is no longer completely in contact with its mating tooth. So this part of the tooth here is no longer really doing any work. And when we look from this side here, we see that a lot of backlash has opened up. And if we hit Ctrl Z on this, we see that originally we really didn't have any backlash to speak of. 
So for bevel gears, it is not only very important to place the shafts themselves accurately, like it is for spur gears, but now it is also very important to accurately place the gears on those shafts. And the only real two uh, surfaces that you have to index from to help you in this placement are the front surface here and the back surface here. So all of these other surfaces on the teeth, for example, are all not really suitable to index off of. And the other issue that you have is that you want to correctly position the gears with respect to the apex, but the apex is also an abstract point in space that you can't really see or index from. So what I did in the case of this bevel gear drive is that I know how far this back surface is from the apex, and then using a spacer, I just index the gear from this surface, and that allows me to accurately place this gear. That's all I have for you today. The next entry in this series should be about worm gears. I hope to see you then. Thanks a lot for watching, and have a good night.